There's a lot that happens on the Oregon coast. And it's a wonderfully spectacular setting. It's also rugged and it's dangerous. Coquille is right by the beach. It's about 15, 20 miles from the Pacific Ocean, a couple hours north of the California border. Coquille is a small farming community, logging, millworking kind of a, a town. Coquille is a two stoplight town. It's kind of tucked into the forest. There's a few restaurants and shops, but there's nothing particularly charming about it. This is a really, really small, close community. Everybody knows everyone. The body of a teenage female, tentatively identified as Leah Freeman, was discovered. What really split this very tight-knit community apart was a tragic criminal case. It involved two high school sweethearts, Leah Freeman and Nick McGuffin. Why do you think you come back on Because they have nothing else to go on, and I'm the boyfriend. It was the signature event that happened in Coquille. It was the event that brought people together and split them apart. Nick McGuffin would become one of the town's most notorious figures. Nick McGuffin, Nick McGuffin. McGuffin. killing his girl murder. Nicholas McGuffin guilty of manslaughter. He became infamous. My name's Nick McGuffin. I'm from Coquille, Oregon. The reason why we're sitting here, for me, in my eyes, is to bring awareness to this case. I'm doing this not for myself, but I'm doing this for Leah and for her family to get resolution. I'm an innocent man, and I want the false narrative to go away. I think it was about two to three when we moved down to Coquille. My mom works in the medical field, and my dad, he started a business, a produce market, riding my mountain bike, delivering the newspaper with the big old paper bag on it, and I wasn't the biggest <laughs> kid. I was Nick's fourth grade teacher in, I believe it was 1992. He was a great student. He enjoyed learning. He was creative. In high school, I was just kind of like any average student. I wasn't different really than anybody else. Nick played for the Coquille football team, and it was a big thing there in Coquille, Friday night football, just like it is in most small towns. Nick, the high school kid, he was always in love in a way. You know, he always had a girl. The girls liked him. I had met Leah when I was walking through the gym, and she was in volleyball practice. She was a freshman, and I was a senior. And she sees me looking at her, and she kind of gives me this look. Leah was beautiful. That was my first impression. She was just a, a short, bright personality, and Aaliyah was like a sparkle. She had a glow to her, and it was somebody that I wanted to get to know. They spent some time together and started dating. I know that Leah really cared about him a great deal. I think that when you're young, you develop strong feelings really quickly, especially if it's with an older guy who shows a lot of interest in you. My Mustang was not anything special. It had a little straight six in it. It was a little three-speed transmission. A lot of times, Leah and I would just drive around and listen to music. I remember a certain song that her and I always listened to. It was Macy Gray, um, I Try, came out in 99. We had a lot of deep conversations. We had a future plan. I know we loved each other. I loved her without a doubt. I think that there were times when Leah would get jealous of Nick hanging out with other girls or that sort of thing. They would argue about it. But they always seemed to resolve it and stay together. He was definitely a flirt. He was kind of into every girl. But he did seem like he really cared about her. I asked Leah if she would go to prom with me. She had a, a gorgeous white dress. She had her hair done perfectly. 
I'm glad we went and we got the pictures that we did together. I think Leo makes me look better. He seemed like an okay kind of guy, but still the age difference was there. And then I found out that they were um, being sexually active, and that was disturbing. It caused some conflict between Leah and I because she wanted to see him. She wanted him to be her boyfriend, and I didn't. Together, they were very compatible. Like any young couple, they had their issues, arguing, whatever, but they both wanted to be together. June 28th, 2000. I'll never forget that date. It started out like any normal day. I got in my Mustang and went to her house. I remember her telling me, we need to you know, clean the outside of the car. We were spraying each other with the hose, splashing each other with soap. I remember we were having a good time. The decision was made to take her to Sherry's house at 7 and pick her up at 9. I hadn't seen her for a while. We were still really good friends, but we just didn't hang out as much because she was with Nick a lot. She was at Sherry's, and she wanted to go jogging and asked Sherry to go with her. Sherry asked her mom, and her mom said no. Because every time you do, Nick comes and picks Leah up, and you end up walking home alone. So Leah heard that, and I guess she got mad and started to walk off. So she left, and then I followed her out to the road, and that's when you know I told her, it's not about you. I guess a lot of it was about the guy she was with. You know, he was like trying to take her away to do things that I wasn't really welcome. She was mad, she had her arms folded. And I can actually still picture it. That was when she was mad, you knew she was mad. Leah took off, upset, clearly upset. And they last, she was headed toward the high school, spotted by numerous witnesses along the way. You don't think anything like that's gonna happen in a small town. Definitely nothing sinister you would ever think would happen in Coquille. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.